following is an example of solving a second order differential equation of the type that's an initial value problem. So here we have the DE second derivative of y with respect to x plus 2 dy dx minus 3y equals 5 e to the 2x. And it's an initial value problem because we also have y naught equals naught, y dash naught equals negative 2 specified as initial conditions. And the first thing we do is find a general solution for the second order DE. Then we substitute in those initial conditions. So the first step with any second order linear DE of this form is to start by finding the auxiliary equation. And in this case, that will be because we have second derivative of y with respect to x plus 2 dy dx minus 3y, the auxiliary equation is going to be r squared plus 2r minus 3 equals 0. And we solve that for r. And in this case, that one is going to readily factorise as r plus 3 times r minus 1 equals 0. So therefore, r is negative 3 or 1 in this case. And these roots of the auxiliary equation determine yh, the complementary function, which is the solution of the associated homogeneous DE. And in this case, these are two real distinct roots. So the form of the complementary function yh is arbitrary constant a times e to the negative 3x plus another arbitrary constant b times e to the 1x. The next step is we then need to look at the right-hand side of the DE we started with. And in this case, this is 5e to the 2x. So it's the e to the 2x bit we're focusing on. That is of the form e to the px, let's say. And what is important is whether this number 2 is a root of our auxiliary equation. And if we look at the roots of our auxiliary equation, they were negative 3 and 1. Neither of those roots were 2. So therefore, because the right-hand side is 5e to the 2x, and this 2 is not a root of our auxiliary equation, that means that we pick a particular solution or a particular integral yp, which is just of the form c e to the 2x. And then the next step is to differentiate this. So the first order derivative of yp with respect to x will just become 2c e to the 2x. And the second order derivative of yp with respect to x will be 4c e to the 2x. And we want to find what c is. Now, this, these must satisfy the DE. That is, they must satisfy second derivative yp double dashed plus 2yp dashed minus 3yp equals 5e to the 2x. So therefore, the next step is to substitute yp and its derivatives into this, which in this case will become 4ce to the 2x plus 2 times the first derivative, so 2 times 2ce e to the 2x, and then minus 3 times c e to the 2x, and that is all equal to the right-hand side of 5 e to the 2x. Expanding and simplifying, all of these are multiples of c e to the 2x, which expand to give us 5 c e to the 2x on the left when we simplify, equals 5 e to the 2x on the right. The e to the 2x's cancel, leaving 5c equals 5, hence c is just equal to 1 in this case. So yp was c e to the 2x, in this case that will just be yp is 1 e to the 2x. That is yp is just e to the 2x here. So this is what we have found so far. The complementary function yh and the particular integral yp. And the general solution y is then yh plus yp, which in this case will give us y equals a e to the negative 3x plus b e to the x plus e to the 2x. 
And if there weren't any initial conditions or special conditions, that would be it. But these two initial conditions here will allow us to solve for the arbitrary constants A and B that we started with to actually find the values that tailor to this particular equation. In other words, here we will in fact be able to find out what A and B are to satisfy this specific example. The first of our initial conditions was y naught equals naught. So what that's saying, that's saying when x equals zero, y is zero. So we sub x equals zero and y equals zero into our solution that we just found. To get zero equals a e to the zero plus b e to the zero plus e to the zero in this case. And e to the zero is just one, so that's just going to give us a plus b plus 1 equals 0. And I'll call that equation 1 because we'll refer back to that shortly. What about our second initial condition though, y dash 0 equals negative 2? To do that we first need to find y dashed, which is basically dy dx. And that's going to be done by differentiating our general solution that we found here and the a e to the negative 3x when we differentiate will become negative 3a e to the negative 3x b e to the x will be the same when we differentiate it and e to the 2x will become 2 e to the 2x and we can now substitute in that initial condition that y dash 0 equals negative 2 as that is saying when x is 0 then y dashed is negative 2. Hence that will become negative 2 equals negative 3 a e to the 0 plus b e to the 0 plus 2 e to the 0. And when we tidy that up a bit, negative 2 equals negative 3 a plus b plus 2. And tidying that one up just a little further, that one is going to end up being negative 3a plus b plus 4 is equal to 0. And I'll call that equation 2. So we now need to solve these simultaneous equations for a and b. And one way we could do this here is to work out equation 1 minus equation 2, for instance, to eliminate b and find a, which would give us a plus b plus 1 minus negative 3a plus b plus 4 equal to 0 minus 0. And that will just become a minus negative 3a, which is 4a, b minus b, which eliminates b as required, and 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So 4a minus 3 is 0, 4a equals 3, and hence a is equal to 3 quarters. Then that can be substituted back into one of our equations to find b. First one looks a bit simpler, so a plus b plus 1 equals 0 becomes 3 quarters plus b plus 1 equals 0, which you can solve readily to find that b is negative 7 divided by 4. So we've now found answers for a and b. And why did we want to do this? That's because we were wanting to find A and B in our solution of the DE. So the final step is to simply substitute these values in, which in this case will give Y equals 3 quarters E to the negative 3X minus 7 divided by 4 E to the X plus E to the 2X. And that is then the solution of this DE, taking those initial conditions into account.